If you didn't know, I record a lot of these right before I go to work. Sometimes I pre-record, other times I have to do it like while I'm supposed to be eating breakfast. Today is one of those days. Uh, I have a cast story recording. I did it on Sunday, but I was not in the right place mentally. So I kind of don't want to watch it and see how good it was. I would rather re-record this. So this is what we're doing. Artoria Caster, I'll, I will give you my take on whether you should summon her for her right now. If you do not have her, you should be summoning for her. If you do have her, you don't need MP2. You should be trying to go for Oberon or Vich. It really depends on how much quartz you have. If you already have, if like if you have enough quartz to secure one of them, you should be going for Oberon. I love Vich, but that's the honest truth because Oberon functions very, very well with Castoria. Just because he doesn't have an arts buff doesn't mean he's like, you don't use him with other classes. It, as long as they can use Black Rail, you, like even if they can't use Black Rail, like he gives such a good, he gives so much to the party. More than Vich would, like definitely more than Vich would in an art setup. If you have an arts unit that is not looping, and you want and then like the big problem is damage you bring oberon <clears throat> if it's looping you bring you can still bring oberon because he is like 30, 70 percent charge he can do it it's just if you need looping you have tons of supports that can do it for a lower cost so uh, let us get started There is technically a lot of spoilers with Castoria right now. I'm going to try and avoid them. Anything story specific. But just know that she, like, personality-wise, she acts nothing like Artoria. She is ba she is her own character. Nasu wanted to rewrite Fate Stay Night in FGO, so he made Lost Belt 6. Big meme going around, but it actually is true. This is probably the closest we get to uh, Master Artoria. Cause I know there was a gag, like that was a gag character, but I think this is what she was based off of personality wise. Attack, it's slow, but you're not, unless you're 120 in your Castoria, which there is a reason someone would do that. Uh, don't, you're not worried about damage. HP, uh, it's nice and high. Uh, it's not the highest though. Uh, the base attack and HP, like as a support aren't, super amazing like they don't stand out but she's a support it doesn't really matter no most of the time you're not even going to take any damage so what does it matter how much hp you have star white star gen normal caster numbers mp charge 0.54 percent with three hit arts cards and three of them this is very very good games like spamming so many arts chains i love it this is what helps make uh all of my hybrid comps that do not use two cast orias because for I think almost, it's not a full year, but for a long couple, I think it's like September, October. Uh, I just like stop using my own Castoria and use other, more of my supports, the three stars. Uh, and you no, know, I kind of find it more fun seeing like how, uh, how much I can bring the bar down and still be able to like actually loop with like consistently i have a whole video about that that i actually helped blow up the channel like back in january uh back to this though uh when you clear avalon lefay so lost belt six she gets the fade trait uh if you're playing through it right now that shouldn't that really shouldn't be a surprise uh, I don't want to fully spoil it, but it, they pretty much say it at the very start of the chapter. Like, I, I'm not explaining this. Uh, hit count overall, all of them are average across the board, but there's nothing wrong with that. That means like even as a caster, she kind of can gen some stars. Uh, it's not something you uh, take a whole lot of advantage of, but it's something she can do. Her skill, 
and it's really these first two which make it so like like Oberon, you can bring her in other setups it does not have to just be art looping it's just she's the best at art looping support 20 percent bad attack for the entire party sorry i almost misspoke that and 30 percent mp gauge for the entire party this is so helpful in uh, hybrid setups especially when they have damaging mps uh, like for the money node right now, I'm using Elena, Mordred, and a friend Castoria, and I put on the Atlas Mystico just because, and that shit actually fucking works. Like, to a surprising effect, too. Like, kind of like the main boss is like kind of iffy, but that's more reliant on me getting Castorias that have their pens unlocked or not. Because there is a big difference for me if I get a Castoria that has or does not have an, a pen. We'll get to that later. This is one of the most important ones, especially if you want to use Castoria in quick support. 20% targeted battery and 30% MP gen. This MP gen is probably the most important part because quick servants need this as much as possible. Is she the best support that can give this? Absolutely not. Mm -mm. Paracelsus can basically do this, but Paracelsus only has a 20% battery, even if it's AOE. She has 50. That's kind of why you'd pick Castoria because it you can pick and choose when you need these. Uh, for quick servants, preferably you'd want to be popping this on. Uh, Castoria would want to be out on turn one, and then you swap out for a Scotty. Uh, but yeah, like target priority, I I truly think like this is the one that you need to level first because that it makes her universal universal. Yeah, can't English right now. Universally good. Hopefully I said that right uh well this is it's good but it's not really gonna help with the looping that much this directly affects looping even if the battery is smaller quick servants kind of like always need that little bit to get to the 50 this is gonna get them to the 50. if your quick servant is at only looping 20 percent uh you have a problem against three enemies if your quick servant is only looping 20 percent, you have a serious problem you need to either change the unit or change what C you're using because quick servants cannot function if you're looping that low third skill this is only for art sleeping obviously well kind of this is much more situational but 50 percent arts buff for three turns targeted amazing no other support uh that is giving what castori is giving aka arts and battery i mean not uh mp gen and battery uh, is giving this much. Paracelsus isn't. Zufu isn't. Uh, Mozart, I think, does, but he's one turning drop stars. He's not giving battery or gain. Uh, yeah, like this part, amazing. This part is extremely situational, though. Uh, deals extra damage against threat uh, to humanity, aka, that is. Uh, like your foreigners, your trees. Like you are hard fights. Like these are boss fights. Which is why you'd bring Castoria. You would bring her to a boss fight and end her discussion. Invo for one turn. Cooldowns 656. Six. So there are hybrid setups you can do uh, that actually use Atlas Mysticode and like uh, a servant that can reduce cooldown. I remember doing this on the Guda 6. Yeah, Guda 6 when they first started introducing or not first, maybe the second event that they introduced like six enemy waves. I remember uh, using uh, Uzuma, uh, Ramaru, and then Frank Castoria, and then just like actually being able to three turn that because I was getting the Castoria this skill off cooldown. I uh, like because the cooldown was reduced by three on turn three, I was able to like give a battery to whoever needed it. And my god, was that helpful, especially because that was a newer account that did not have Castoria, did not have bitch. Uh, all I had was waiver, so that's kind of the reason I needed to. That account was like literally a month old at the time, so that 
I know it's like that sounds random, but that's my memory as a new player to JP at the time. And it's crazy that now, like, this is like I'm about to hit the point I started JP on. That is wild. Passives, we got magic resist 20%, debuff resistance, territory creation EX. Oof. 12% arts. Like, she's not damaging, but that helps with the refund on this. This is why, like, I actually know. <laughs> I actually know like the exact MP gen the cast story gets every time she attacks. Like un like as weird as that sounds, like I actually have this shit memorized because of like all the weird setups I did, especially uh farming for uh arrowheads that I that you need for bitch. Yeah, I had to fucking memorize like how much uh MP gen she gets on card one, arts lead, uh and then Nero at the same time. Like that's this has some definite uh try hard looping shit. Uh I think those loops are still on the channel. I, I can't even remember. 10% art crit damage, cool. It's whatever. In invincible comp she'll have stars, so her art crit will do more damage. So when she loops bet uh gets a lot of refund, she also does a little more damage. When you clear Avalon Lafay, lost belt six. You get Morgan's passive. You get 20% crit attack chance resistance. What a fucking support. On a support that you bring to challenge quests almost constantly. This is like an amazingly broken passive for a support like Castoria, who is commonly being targeted by the AI. Uh, you want her not to get crit as much as possible. You want your cast story to stay alive as much as possible, especially because she doesn't have healing. Pen skills. I cannot stress enough how much more I will use someone's support if they have mana loading unlock on a cast story. It makes my life as trying to loop with a lower cost so much easier because I can actually consistently pop the cast story MP. That it, it depending on the servant, that actually might make or break the loop, especially if they are very like lower investment. Like Jason, I don't have engrailed on NA. He is able to loop because I'm popping Castori MPs. He would be, he definitely would not be looping as easy as he is. I would have to be using like Black Rail or another Art CE to give him more gain. Castori MPs help so many looping servants. I know it ups the time of the run, but if you care more about like actually clearing it consistently and things not going to literal shit, uh, you will want to have this leveled. It's also kind of the reason why I put my Castoria on a uh, Bella Lisa, because if you look at your friends list, like if you look at it, 99% of all Castorias have tea time. You're not always going to be farming pawn points. Some people want to farm money. That's why I put Bella Lisa there. Uh, and if you want the friend code for that, uh, I have that on my Twitch. I don't have my friend code memorized. Or if you guys are in the streams, like I don't hide that. Just send me a request. And yeah, I prioritize people in chat. I will. This is the one thing I have to bring up, though, like about the mana loading. And I get why people do not have mana loading maxed out you need 72 of these bells uh if you are very aware of jp you know who exactly needs a shit ton of these so i get why people don't want to have this maxed out they are probably going for melson but i mean like cast story you technically do is technically in use your cast story is technically in use more than melson so that is my art like selling point on that uh and it really sucks because these are melton skills not her a pen so no matter what she is going to need at least 72 for you to be farming efficiently with melison you could probably get away with like just the 72 but she really just needs the, uh the battery uh leveled and then her third skill for her 100% battery. You don't 
you don't need that maxed out depending on your setup you, like level six is probably gonna be enough for people and it has the cooldown i believe yeah the cooldown is five so if you're at six 75 percent battery uh that is more literal that is literally enough to start black like the black road because you get 30 from here 70 75 from here like technically it would be uh level five but then the cooldown is too high and then you can't do you can't do buster looping all right so that's that's my disclaimer though castoria you do, i do like people to have it but most people are not going to have it because you have to use cum prisms for that or you had to when she first came out i don't know i think there's more than enough bells that have been handed out that you don't need it all right finally we're talking about the mp this is like infamous for all invincible comps you the cast story is like always the most important part 30 percent attack buff to the impart entire party for three turns and it scales with level so mp2 is 40 percent. that is a big jump and then after that it's like almost negible so if you want to go for an extra copy of cast story stop it too you'll get more that's the, the that's the most you'll get out of it Party cleanse, very important too. If you're in a challenge quest, they're loading you with debuffs. This stops you from taking out from dot damage or getting like crit to oblivion, or you're just your attack being neutered. I mean, in invincible comp, you kind of don't care. You're stalling out, but I mean, do you want, do you want it to take longer or do you want to clear it faster? Here is the most pivotal part of invincible comp. The overcharge you get anti-purge or solemn defense that these do not refresh if you pop the mp again they don't you have to use them out otherwise when you pop it it does nothing and then at the end of the turn you lose the stacks you had before that is why castoria cadence is three turns every three turns you're popping your mp unless everyone has it white if everyone has it gone then you can start popping it sooner but you want to keep it like about three turns. That's also why you don't use double cast story in challenge quests, because you basically only have two servants that can MP. And your bit the third cast story is basically there for cleanses and I guess attack buffs. That's why you want like a Tomo, a Lady Avalon, a Popus Johanna, someone else there that, that boosts up your art and crit damage. This this uh, defense can't be bypassed by uh, invincibility. The only way to remove it is with buff removal. And let's be honest, if you have, if you get buff removed, the, like nothing, you need buff removal resistance uh, to keep your stuff. And that, <laughs> Sufu can do that, but that is only one time thing, well, one turn. So timing is important. You need to know the boss you're fighting. That is, that's probably the most important. You need to know what boss you're fighting, what mechanics they have, and then build your team around that. Because if you go into invincible, invincible comp and they just get buffer removed, you are so fucked. It's not even funny. Like you are actually so screwed if you do not have like stuff re like you're ready to pop again the next turn after the buffer move. Ah. So MP is probably one of the best in the game. You literally stop taking damage and depending on how well you mitigate it, you might never take damage because invincible comp, you're sitting at here, not here. You are almost never getting one stack. You're always getting at least three to five and five hits for enemies that hit you once. Uh, like they get three hits for three turns. That's nine attacks. If they're not doing AOE, unless they're focusing your unit, you're literally not going to take damage. That's the only weakness. If your unit gets uh, taunted, but a taunt is a debuff and you can cleanse it off. So it shouldn't last for that long. Hopefully you don't die. And that's what Merlin is for in that comp or Lady at one. Their end goals are to be when your uh, solemn defense is gone. Uh, Matt's leveling her really aren't that bad. It's really just her pens that have lost belt six max. I already said my opinion. If you if you don't have Castoria, summon for her. If you do have her, you don't need MP two. 
unless you like really want that protection against drain bosses, that Castori will always still be able to MP. Yeah. On JP, like here's the aside though, if you only need her for looping, you don't need her on JP. She's, you want to have her, but she's not the must summon for looping. For looping, you have so many supports. You have plug suits that you can use in place. Like Zufu, like combining the three star options gives you, in some cases, gives you more gain than what you ha would have with Castoria. Uh, Zufu plus Paracelsus, you have a 50% arts buff, and then you have, I believe, an 80% uh, 80 MP gain, uh, but you only have the 30% battery. You can mi mi mix and match those low level supports to re receive results very similar, if not exceeding Castoria. But again, that's mi mixing. Just remember, you're mixing two units to get what Castoria is. So really, you're using those units until you can get your own Castoria. She truly is account changing. If you don't have her, you should be thinking about getting her. And if you don't want to summon for her, her, her on this banner, just remember, she is going to be on the GSSR. She is on the banner with Morgan, Karen, Tyra, and Miss Crane. All five units, good. Are they the, the most meta? No, but they do have a place in the meta. All of them have a place. They're all good servants. Uh, Karen, not so much right now, but definitely when she gets her MP buff, uh yeah like she's black rail farming really really well all right i will see you guys in the next one peace if you enjoyed this video please drop a like comment sub all that good youtube stuff i'm putting this at the end of the video because i'm really bad about selling out mid video so thank you for watching